everyone, I'm Heather and welcome to my channel. So instead of a DIY, today's video is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little bit of a shaky vlog. I'm going to take you guys around my classroom. A few of you may know this already, but if you're new to this channel, I am currently a first year fourth grade teacher and I'm very excited to start the year. So I've set up my classroom. It's just about done. I'm a sweaty mess. <laughs> I've been here for the past week and a half or so getting everything ready. I just want to give you a quick classroom tour and let you in on a few of the DIYs that I've done for my room. So let's get started. So I figured a good place to start would be the front door. This is what you see when you walk in. We have our school information and our emergency packet there. And then we have our sign in and out board. And I really should just call it our sign out board because I'm only going to be having students sign their name and tell me where they're going whenever they're leaving. That way I have a visual space to, or I should say visual area to look at and go, okay, who is where? Not just who's gone. Um, below that, we have our equipment basket. And this is actually a blanket basket that I got from Wayfair. And we ran out of room in our apartment for it. I didn't really have a space. And it was right around the time that I started planning for my classroom, so I was like, you know what, I'm taking it to the classroom. <laughs> Figured I could use it somehow, and it actually turned out to be a really good equipment basket. So I stuck that there. And then this lovely beauty, I think I may have posted a picture of this um, already um, on my Instagram account. We have this area where people in our apartment complex can leave larger items. This stand was actually back there. And I was like, you know what? This is a perfectly good stand. So I pulled it inside, cleaned it all up, scrubbed it down, painted it, and then added this wood surface. So yeah, right now I just have it here. I'm sure that as the year goes on, I'll find more uses for it, but it's just as a tissue and hand sanitizer as we walk in and out of the classroom. Above that, we have our classroom job board. If you see anything that you like, I'm going to do my very best to link everything down below to let you guys know where I got everything. But a lot of this cute stuff I purchased off of Teachers Pay Teachers. So this is a, um, I know it's called Classroom Jobs for Big Kids, but I cannot remember the seller's name. So uh, go ahead and look down below in the description box if you would like to know where it's from. But I just love that she had, the seller had a bunch of different options that came already made. And then it also came with an editable version so you could change things. So I think that they had um, an iPad engineer and I changed it to Chromebooks because we don't uh, have iPads in my school. So I set that all up. Um, I actually shrunk them down because they, they came a little larger. So I shrunk them down and um, I put them up there for right now. I didn't shrink the numbers down. I think I'm going to do that, but I don't know. I already made the numbers, so we'll see. And I like that you can put that all up and then the students' numbers are the ones that rotate. I just love the way this looks. I like that it's bright. I like that I chose the black butcher paper or I should say just black chalkboard style paper. If I can't, you probably can't really tell on camera, but it's chalkboard style. But yeah, so you just put them all up there and they don't move unless you wanted to change a job. But other than that, the numbers are what move. So let me give you a quick overview of the room. So if I stand at the door, here is my classroom. And before we move on, I want to give you a quick rundown of this corner as well. We have our standards, a few different types of dictionaries and resources for students to use. I have my little hello light box, which looks way better when it's on. And you can't even really tell. <laughs> on camera you can't really tell that's okay um, so I just have that there and then I have our lost and found bin I picked up a bunch of these bins from Walmart and I was gonna use them for our classroom library and it just didn't turn out the way that I wanted um, and I didn't actually need all the ones that I bought so I had already cut off the tags I didn't want to mess around with having to return it so I just figured I would use them in other ways in the classroom so I just put some vinyl on there using my Cricut machine and it says, help me, I'm lost. And yeah, I figured it's big enough for larger items. I like that it's right here. If students know that they've lost something, they can come over here and check real quick. Moving on, we have our student desk and student name tags are all set up. I covered up that area because it has a student's first and last name. 
but these are my name tags. Um, a lot of the stuff in my classroom, actually, I do know that seller. A lot of my stuff in the classroom um, came from uh, Teach, Create, Motivate on te uh, Teachers Pay Teachers. So these are the name tags I purchased. They came with like little cartoon options here, and I chose to go without the cartoons just because I didn't, I don't know, I don't know what all of my students look like yet, so I didn't want to give them the incorrect character. So I just kind of left that blank. Next to the name tags, I put the Target uh, 4x4 pocket labels. Over here we have my desk area, and I just taped a few of the positive or growth mindset quotes that I got from Teachers Be Teachers. I just taped them on there for decoration because I kind of want to decorate my desk, but I'm not sure how yet, so we'll see. I have to find an outlet for that lamp. So there's one right there, a little far. We'll figure it out. Um, and on my desk, I'll go around. Here's my little desk corner. So I have this cart here, which is from Michael's, and I got it all set up. I figured it would be a good little landing dock for anything that we're working on. I'm not sure if I want to keep it here by my desk or here by our um, technology cart, which is basically, we call this an Elmo because that's what the name of the uh, projector or you know overhead is called. So I don't know, it might work there. I'm a little concerned about it being, you know, close to student hands, or I'm already concerned about that being close to hands, but we'll see how it goes. For right now, I think I'm going to leave it here. By my desk is kind of like a command station for me. And on my desk, I just have the basics. We have just filing cabinet. And behind my desk, it's just my little decorative corner. I have my teacher toolbox and then my bookshelf, which just right now holds my personal books, um, a few of the unit folders, a standards binder, binder, and um, you know, just my teacher's editions or my teacher manuals. On top of this shelf, again, I just have my teacher uh, toolbox. I wanna get a picture of my teacher buddies, the girls in my cohort, and put that in there. I think that would be nice to have. Behind my desk, I got this crayon from, um, the Target dollar spot. I really want to use it for box tops since it's a piggy bank. So I'm going to get some vinyl on that. And then above my desk, I just have, or above this bookshelf, I just have a few decorative items. I actually got this from a few family friends about a year ago when I graduated from college the first time. And it's just classroom rules. It's so cute. Thank you, David and Janet. I was very excited to be able to hang that up. And then I have my grad cap. So let me give you another overview from this angle. This is what I see when I'm sitting at my desk. So here is the front of my classroom. And above my whiteboards, I just have the alphabet, of course. Actually, you know what's funny is I didn't actually double check to see if that was in order. <laughs> I should probably check. We do have multiple whiteboards and a smart board. And then on this side, I just have my teacher stool, which is actually a previous DIY, so I'm very excited to be able to use that in my classroom. And then we have my sink area. So a couple things about this corner. We're going to be doing uh, what's called the desk fairy, and I purchased this little door online. It is so stinking cute. So I stuck that vinyl up there, um, and basically the desk fairy is every Friday. I've decided that it's going to be every Friday. I'm going to try to make it every Friday. I'm going to go around and peek inside each student's desk and I don't know if I'll pick one, if I'll pick a couple, maybe I'll limit it to three. I'm definitely going to have to keep track. That way I make sure I'm not picking the same student over and over again. But uh, I have these little coupons or these little like reward printouts and it basically says the desk fairy came to visit and noticed that you had like a really organized desk. I'm totally paraphrasing what this says but if they get a visit from the desk fairy. Let's see, I don't have them on me. But if they get a visit from the desk fairy, they get to turn in their little coupon and they get, they get to pick a prize from my little reward box. And I just have a bunch of junk in here, honestly. But I thought that would be a fun way to try to take ownership of their space. Um, I'm hoping, obviously, that you know, after a while, they'll just do that naturally. <laughs> What is that? Talk about wishful thinking, huh? But anyway, about this corner again, we have our birthday banner. 
So above the sink, because it's recessed like this, it's kind of an awkward space. It's kind of dead space. So I hung up the birthday banner there. And for each child or each student, I made a little uh, clothespin with their birthday on it. And then I just attached it to their birthday month. This was a teacher's pay teacher's freebie and I love it. It is so stinking cute. I'm really trying not to talk fast because I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> it's already 6.30. So let's continue. I have these really cute prints on the wall here. I wasn't really sure where to put them, so I thought I would kind of fill the rest of the space with that. And here is one of my favorite parts of my classroom. It is our student work wall. I got the pencil banner from Target like a year ago, and I was going to put the word or, you know, the letters uh, to spell out right on there, but I don't want to limit this wall to just writing. So I thought I would just leave it for now and, you know, kind of see where we go with it. Each student will have, you know, stay tuned for wonderful work. And I'm thinking about putting their numbers on them. Oh, that's what I should do. Good. I accidentally printed two sets of numbers for the jobs. Well, I didn't accidentally do it. I was trying to fix something and I messed it up more. So I have two sets now and that is actually perfect. I'll stick those on there. We have my small group table and I only have my chair there for small group instruction. And I want to find a way to mount this. I don't know if I should tape it to the table, but I really like it. It's another freebie and it says, uh, stop, ask three before me, group in progress. And this is kind of for small group instruction. If the rest of the class is doing something else, if they need help, they need to ask three people before they come and interrupt the group. Not because what they need is not important, but because, you know, whatever we're doing over here is also important. And because I have a room that is kind of small, I thought I would go to Ikea and buy these little stools. They're five bucks a piece, totally worth it. And I like that they stack. That's my favorite part. I like that they stack. Students can grab it, uh, sit around the group work table with me. And um, right now I only have five. I should probably go get like two more just in case. Maybe three more, we'll see. And here is our classroom library. I still have to add a few more books. So I have my little green rug from Ikea. I just think it kind of brightens up the corner a little bit or the wall, I should say, area. So our library is organized um, according to reading level. I went to our uh, school library and I looked up however we code books there, or I should say however we organize books there. So I looked up that, took a picture, you know, real quick, because they have a, you know, a quick guide for students. Took a picture real quick and then I brought it home to reference for my own. And I use this, it's called um, Rainbow uh, Classroom Library or something. Again, I'll link it down below. But it basically is a system to organize your library and you can do any color you want. So using her pack, this seller's pack, I forget her name, I created this little key for my students to use. And above, just like our library, it says this color is, well, this is how you would read it. Lexile like level is on top and AR level is on the bottom. And so I put it for each color. So, you know, if you see a red, it means this. And we go primarily by AR level, but we have both. So it says color guide. Here are our classroom library color codes. Use them to help put books back in the correct place. I really like this system because it's still a leveled library, but it's really easy to keep organized. I love that it's just a quick sticker. Students can quickly glance, you know, oh, I get yellow books whenever we go to the library. So when we're in the classroom library, I should probably be looking at library, <laughs> library. I should probably be looking at yellow library books. I really like that. And it, you know, when you're standing from here, not only is it organized, practical, but it also looks really pretty. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. And over here, we just have this little corner. I have my growth mindset uh, bulletin board set or just, you know, growth mindset picture set. Again, I believe that one. Yes, teach, create, motivate on Teachers Be Teachers. That bin is from Ikea. And it just right now is holding our, um, I guess, Oh my gosh, I'm in that mode where you're just like forgetting words. Chair cushions. <laughs> Those are cushions that they can choose to purchase with our positive behavior incentives. This little cart here, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with it. I think I might take it home. 
but I'm gonna leave it there for now because eventually I'm going to add more books so I thought the book hospital should kind of go right there we'll see of course I had to make a bin for book hospital if any of the books are broken you know ripped whatever if they need to be fixed I figured I would have a place for students to drop them so that they're not all ending up on my desk um, I forgot to mention the bins on the bottom so originally I was going to try to do all of the bins on all three of the shelves all three of these shelves uh, that would have been very expensive but it just I thought you know it was overkill so I found this system went with this color coding system and then I thought you know um, my neighbor teacher also organizes her library in a similar fashion with you know some bins some not in bins so I organized the bottom row by genre so there's still the books that are in these bins will still be color coded so they can return to their shelf wherever they need to go but I like that these bins can change out so I can change genre or I can change the books that are in them so we have thriller science fiction fantasy adventure and mystery that came out, I finished that up today, and that came out a lot better than I thought it would. That is our little pod door. It leads into the workroom in the center of all of the classrooms for my grade level. And then I found this, I feel like this was a freebie, but I honestly can't remember. It just says how to be a friend, find something in common, respect others, invite and include, you know, have empathy, know when to support. Oh, not even showing you, sorry. Do the right thing, say you're sorry. I really like that as a quick reminder. We do rotations a lot through this door, so I like that it's a quick reminder for students to see. This wonderful cabinet <laughs> uh, was almost the death of me. So this cabinet came with my classroom. The previous teacher actually purchased it at an excess property sale. She left it for me and I was very excited because it is a sturdy cabinet. It was just the wrong color for my taste, so I was like, you know what, I'll paint it. Painted it white, absolutely hated it. So I repainted it black um, and it came out great. It was totally worth it. It was just a pain in the butt. Right now I'm using it to store a few of our textbooks. I picked up some magazine folders from Ikea and I'm, I numbered them with uh, laminated numbers that are Velcroed on. So if a student had to, we have an extra one up here. So if a student had to, uh, they could switch it out with someone else's. I really like that it doesn't damage the bin. Yeah, it doesn't prevent like another student from using it and it holds all of their materials. So this one is complete. So basically all of them look like that right now. And on top of it, we have our student mailboxes crate. I picked up an extra one because I wasn't sure if I would want two, but for now we just have one. I have to get more folders to put in there. But I like how simple this is. Just stick a ring on there. And let's see. This is actually a picnic caddy, I believe that's what you would call it. Um, a picnic caddy from Walmart. And <laughs> it was 10 bucks, you know, galvanized metal. How could I resist? So I picked it up, put some of the felt feet on the bottom, and we're just gonna use this for extra supplies. I think I might put index cards, or maybe like highlighters in here. That would be a better idea. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Over here, oh crap, I didn't make those labels. <laughs> You guys should have seen it. I filmed this entire video setting up this classroom, getting it all ready, and I was just a rambling mess. Like, worse than I am right now. Because I already tend to ramble. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> but it was horrible. It was just a mess. So I wanted to get through this video without doing that. Not going to happen, obviously. Anyway, I just came up, or I just remembered that I need to fix this. So we will do that. Anyway. We have our little sharpening corner or pencil sharpening corner. Uh, we have a standard pencil sharpener and then we have an electronic one, student stapler, uh, sharpened pencils, and then pencils that need to be sharpened. This is a classroom job, so I just have a little corner for it. And another extreme favorite of mine, I, I love it, is my maker space. So well, maker space is, from what I understand, a fairly new concept. It's been gaining some traction online and in education circles, but it's basically like a tinkering area. So Makerspace is a STEM concept, or you some might even call it a STEAM concept, and that's basically just science, technology, um, uh, engineering, and math. And I just love that it's really engaging and that it gets kids to use their hands and to evaluate things. So 
we have the uh, Makerspace Principles. This is another uh, TPT pack and I'll link it down below. So students will plan, build, evaluate, reflect, and redesign. And this is actually a process. So they start with plan and they go through the process and eventually they get to redesign and then they're planning it again and they're building it again. So I need to make little arrows, but this space will develop as time goes on. I kind of left it really simple right now because I wasn't sure what I would want to put on here, what I want to do with it. I'm just not sure yet. Right now, I just have a workspace. These were two extra desks that I was able to pull in and I figured I would keep paper materials inside the desks. I want to get a mounting system of some sort that can hold some more supplies, but we'll see. So I kind of left that open. And of course I have my Ikea cart for more supplies. And on the side is just a little tag that says makerspace organization, just talking about, you know, basically cleaning up after yourself. So we'll see how this center develops, or I keep wanting to say center, how this corner develops. And I'm gonna send out a note on back to school night asking parents if they would like to donate any supplies and that could be anything from velcro <laughs> pencils crayons you know popsicle sticks whatever it may be whatever you can build with and i think that's why i like it so much is that it's just a really creative space that is basically it i'm going to do a once over again of my classroom and hopefully this video was not too rambly for you it is almost 7 o'clock, so I am going to get out of here.